Every year we set all these goals, but the reality is most of us give up because we don't form good habits to help us stay on track. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing motivational tips that I'll also be following to help you become your best productive self. I like to start off the day by making my bed each morning. This small change will help you feel more accomplished and encourage you to be more productive throughout the day. I also take the time to take care of my spiritual needs, so I pray, read my Bible, and I do a bit of journaling. Whenever I do this, I get clarity on so many different areas of my life, and it just encourages me to be more productive. Don't underestimate a good morning routine. It helps reduce stress, anxiety, and makes you feel more in control of your day. Even if you wake up not feeling too great or you're just not a morning person like me, just doing little tasks in the morning will make you feel so productive. I've struggled so much in the past with building a good routine because I would try to copy what others did and never worked for me. Of course, you can get inspiration from others, that's normal, but you really want to make it personal so you actually stick with the new habits you're trying to form. Your routine may look different than mine, but you should choose to do the things that you know you'll stick to and just build from there. The same thing goes for a book I've been reading. So I started the 12 week year pretty much the last week of December and it was my goal to finish it that week, but life got in the way, I got busy. So I kind of gave up on reading it because it's basically a week into the new year and I haven't picked it up. But I realized last night, like, that's not good. Like, just because I didn't meet my goal, that doesn't mean I all of a sudden have to, like, give up on it. So starting today, I'm picking it back up and I'm reading it. Um, doesn't matter that the year started. My 12-week year can start literally when I want it to. Any week of the year it doesn't have to start right in the beginning of January. And this morning, I woke up in a little bit of a mood. But after doing my Bible study and journaling, I feel a lot better. I don't always journal every day. Um, but I kind of just do what I feel. If I feel like I need to journal, I'll journal. But if I feel like I need to read, I'll just read. So it really depends on how I'm feeling. Take small steps towards your goal. A small step is better than not doing it at all. I've been wanting to declutter my closet for a while, but because I felt like I had to do a thorough closet clean, I've been putting it off. But then the other day, I remembered it's okay to start small. So even if I do a mini closet clean, it's better than not cleaning out my closet at all. Sometimes you're not reaching your goals, not because you're unable to do it, but because you lack the confidence. People overlook how much hanging on to things like clothes you don't like impacts your confidence and performance. I know when I put on a cute gym set, I feel like I can run faster, do an extra set. So if it doesn't bring you joy, just get rid of it. Sometimes in order to accomplish your goals, you gotta work with yourself a little bit. I made a personal fitness goal to reach about five to 10,000 steps a day. And ever since I got a walking pad, I'm actually able to achieve that. And that's because I was honest with myself and I realized, hey, like nine times out of 10, I don't really like walking outside, probably won't make it to the gym, but I will walk on a walking pad. And that's not to say that I'll never walk outside or I'll never go to the gym. I just know that using a walking pad, it will be a lot easier for me to reach my goal. Sometimes when you're starting to form a new habit or build a routine, it kind of gets boring, but there are little things that you can do to make it more exciting. Like for example, buying a cute water bottle so you're more excited to drink water. I did this and I recommend because I actually drink water now, which is crazy because if you know me, you know like I struggle with that. And say if you have to study or you're doing some work that you don't really feel like doing, try lighting a candle. I know a good scented candle always puts me in a good mood. So whatever it is that you could do to make what you have to do a little bit easier or enjoyable, just do it. It's not enough to just think about what you wanna achieve in your life. You actually need to write it down and make a plan. I'm someone who gets overwhelmed super easily and I know I can't tackle a ton of major goals at one time. So after writing down all of my goals, I categorize them into major and minor goals. I give my major goals about 80% of my time and my minor goals 20% of my time. This helps me so much because I want to live so many lives, okay? So if I only try to focus on my major goals, I'll be thinking about the minor goals in the back of my head and that's not productive. So doing this helps me to prioritize both my major and my minor goals.
Habit stacking is so important when you're trying to form new habits so you can be your best self. I cannot emphasize this enough. Habit stacking is when you pair a new habit with an existing habit. For example, if you walk into a building and you see stairs, you'll skip the elevator and take the stairs instead. And maybe let's say you finish eating dinner. Instead of leaving your plate in the sink, you immediately wash it or put it in the dishwasher. It can honestly be as simple as when you walk your dog, you listen to a podcast. So the point is you want to build off the momentum of existing habits, which will help you when trying to form new habits. I want you guys to remember that forming new habits is a journey and it's not something that you're going to change overnight. A lot of the times the bad habits that we carry have been formed and have been piled up over years and years and years and it's really difficult to just wake up one day and do a complete 180. Some people can do that and that's amazing but I know I personally can't. So in order to change your life permanently, similar to losing weight, you have to do it slow and steady so you can maintain the new lifestyle you're trying to achieve. So this is why you should really try to focus on being 1% better each day and try not to make your new habits or goals all or nothing. If you miss a day, if you slip up, give yourself a break. It's okay. Let some pressure off and just focus on getting a little better each day and make actionable goals so you can actually stick with them. Instead of saying, I want to go to the gym this week, say, I'm going to go to the gym four times this week. Instead of saying, I want to drink more water, say, I want to drink 32 ounces of water each day. The more specific you are, the more likely you'll be able to actually achieve the goals you want to achieve, form new habits, and maintain them. Forming good habits take time, so don't be hard on yourself if you're not seeing immediate change in your life. Your life literally could be changing right before your eyes, but you just can't see it yet. Don't go so crazy with goal setting that you completely just forget about the present. Remember, tomorrow has its own worries, so just really try to be present in the moment. And if there are any goals you didn't accomplish in 2023, it is not too late to pick it back up. As long as you make an honest effort towards your goals, you will definitely see change over time, so please be patient with yourself.